Yesterday, I interviewed Robin Perry on my channel, giving a defense of universalism, Christian universalism. Robin is a very astute thinker, and he gives a compelling biblical, theological, historical, philosophical, and pastoral case for universalism uh, in many of his writings, most importantly, I think, in his book, The Evangelical Universalist. And also, we touched upon many of those points in our interview yesterday. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Now, unfortunately, there's no shortage of really bad and half-baked and just completely wrong-headed objections to universalism. And I came across one of them just this morning, courtesy of Frank Turek, who tweeted a short video and uh, and, and comments introducing it. The video comes from uh, Christian speaker Melissa Doherty. It's just eight seconds long. Uh, but what we're going to do is just take a look at it, and then I'm going to offer a response to it. So here's the tweet. Frank says, the overall concept of universalism may feel warm and fuzzy, but is it really as loving as it sounds? Is it just? In order to find out, we need to take it to its logical conclusion. And CAT member, I don't know what CAT is, I assume it's an acronym for something. CAT member Melissa Doherty is here to help. So then we have the video itself. So now we're going to just take a listen to the video. In this view of universalism, the devil wasn't beaten, but redeemed. Now, the video is acting like this is something of a mic drop moment that, whoa, on universalism, the devil isn't defeated, the devil is redeemed, as if that's somehow a bad thing. Uh, and of course, uh, Turek himself sets it up by implying that somehow this is unjust. Well, it's no, in principle, no more unjust for, for God to redeem any uh, being who's undeserving of grace, which by definition, if it's grace, you're undeserving of it. Uh, if, if he gives grace to anybody, then uh, he does that by his own justice. But it has to occur through genuine repentance. And of course, universalism is the view that that genuine repentance will eventually uh, encompass, and God's love will encompass every creature who will be restored to him. So there's nothing unjust about it. You're just caricaturing a straw man in your imagination if you think otherwise. But let's just focus in upon upon this this idea of the devil being def uh, being uh, restored rather than defeated. So the first problem here is this whole mindset is actually completely wrongheaded. Imagine that you um, are estranged from a parent or let's child. Let's let's not put you into it. Let's just say a child is estranged from their parent. They have a fight when the, say the child makes certain life decisions. Parent wants them to become a lawyer. They want to become an artist. They become an artist and have a flailing career making pottery for 20 years. And then they hear that the parent who they've been estranged from for 20 years has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And uh, the call is, is made to them from other family members, go back home and be restored to your the parent before they die. Now imagine if this artist, estranged, angry child, responds by saying, if I go back and if I am restored to my parent, and if we are reconciled to one another, then I don't win, and they're not defeated. What would you think of that as a response? I, I, th I would think that's a tragic response. I would think that response completely misunderstands the call of the gospel, which is a ministry of reconciliation wherever possible. And if you can seek to be restored, and if to that parent, if, if the parent can be restored to you, then you ought to pursue that, and you ought to hope for that, and you ought to desire it. That's the expansive love of the gospel. And that's a love that the universalist of ours extends even to um, every human being that's ever lived, and perhaps even to demonic creatures and to the devil himself. This brings me to the second point. Uh, so Melissa Doherty and Frank Turek are very concerned about destroying and defeating others, in particular here, the devil. And there is a sense where in reconciliation, the devil is defeated. There's this old saying, which has been attributed apocryphally to uh, Abraham Lincoln and other people as well. But the basic gist of it goes like this. So it doesn't matter whether Lincoln said it. The basic gist is this. I defeat my enemies by making them my friends. Think about that. If you are estranged from somebody, they are an enemy. If you are restored to them, that person as an enemy is now destroyed because they've now become a friend. They've now been reconciled to you. 
if you really are so concerned about defeating the devil, well, in fact, universalism does defeat the devil. Universalism defeats every enemy by making them a friend and a servant of God. And that is something that the universalist believes in and hopes for. So whatever you think of universalism, uh, please do not be compelled by completely wrong-headed caricature straw men arguments like that, which are promoted by Frank Turek and Melissa Doherty. If you really want to destroy an enemy, if you really want to defeat an enemy, make them a friend.